Amen. Every praise we give you this morning, Lord, as we come before you, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We praise you despite everything that is happening, Lord God. We thank you for everything. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for this Monday morning. We thank you for this day and the newness of this day. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for grace and mercy. We give you every praise, Lord God. We thank you for our families. Lord, we know that we don't have everything that we're asking for and many things that we've been praying for have not come true, but we still believe and we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for what you have already done. You're such a good father. And I thank you, Lord, for hearing the cries of your children this morning. Lord, some of us are crying out of our mouth, but some of us are just crying from our heart. So I thank you, Lord, that you're hearing the cries on the hearts of your children this morning. Those who have been seeking your face and asking, where are you, Abba? In, in this moment, Lord God, I ask that you'll just reassure us as we're crying out, Lord God. Thank you for meeting us where we are. Thank you for meeting us this morning. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to come before your holiness. Thank you, Lord God, for who you are. And, and we, we know that we are yours. We are your children. We're the apple of your eye. I thank you, Lord, for gracing us with your holy presence this morning. I thank you for blessing this day. Thank you, Lord God, for technology so that we can come to you, Lord, just come coming together as a community, praying, Lord God, beseeching your face. 
I thank you for your grace today, Lord God. I thank you for your kindness toward us and your mercy. I thank you for your steadfast love. I thank you for the love that surpasses all understanding. I thank you for peace in our hearts. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing for us in this moment. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice. I thank you for your blood. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your guidance and your leadership. We thank you for your patience with us and your grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to us and praying for us. Thank you for interceding, high priest. Thank you for those you have sent through the angelic ministry to bless us, to carry out the, the assignments that you've, you've given each and every one of us. Thank you for those you've sent along the way, divine helpers and friends, Lord God. I thank you for fellow prayer warriors, Lord God, as we come before you. Now, Lord, we give you this place. We give you our hearts this morning. We give you our minds. We're even empty in our thoughts, Lord God, as we come before you just as vessels asking to be refilled today with your holiness and your holy oil, Lord God, so that no matter where we go, we're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to carry out whatever you have asked us and tasked us to do. We thank you, God, that it is only you. Give us the fruits of the Spirit, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And thank you again for this uh, Monday, November 11th, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for this special day. I thank you for every family represented this morning. Thank you. And we praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Y'all, thank you for joining me. I know it's early. <laughs> I know it's real early, um, but thank you. You didn't have to, but you chose to be here. So thank you for coming on. And also a quick shout out to those who um, who are watching. We have a uh, we have a good group of folks who who watch, uh, you know, watch the replays faithfully. <laughs> So thank you all for those who are watching. And again, if you have prayer requests, don't forget, you can either drop it in the comments, whether in the Facebook group or you're in the YouTube or wherever, wherever, wherever you are. But you can also come and um, pray with us on Thursday. You can call the phone line. There's no obviously no Zoom for that. So the next couple of days, we're going to be um, praying. Our theme is going to be fearless faith. And, uh, and, and what I'm trying to do is as I'm um, praying, but also teaching as well, is to give more context to some of the things, not just give you all scriptures, but I've included some notes. So I'm just going to kind of stay on that. And I think that's important because we don't want to just throw God's word out, words out where people can't understand what it means. And we have to be able to apply it practically to our lives. Otherwise, you know, we're going to be lost, just to be honest, right? So from fear to faith, that's what we're trying to do. And um, a lot of us dealing uncertainty. And and sometimes that, fa that fear isn't too bad because, you know, for me, when I'm going through a period when I'm afraid is where I know I'm calling on the Lord more, is sometimes it's a it's an act of obedience. I know this sounds crazy, but I'm more obedient to him when I'm afraid because I'm looking to him more than I'm looking to myself. So I call it fearless faith, right? That's what it is for me. So that's where that title comes from. So before we go further, we're going to open our mouth and confess. Again, this is a heart posture. For those y'all watch, why do we do this? Because it's a heart posture. It's surrendering and yielding to him. You can't. I don't go up to the, to the throne. I don't enter his throne room and act like I belong there, right? Because of the blood, I belong here. Nope. <laughs> I recognize that. Um, I recognize that, that it's his grace that does that, but we have to have the right heart posture. Why don't I get my prayers answered is the number one question that I get. And a lot of, a lot of the, the times when I have to tell people, it's your heart posture. That's what it is, is you're not willing, you're not yielding your heart to him. You don't confess anything to him. Um, you just kind of show up expecting because you got, because of the blood, I, do, you know, I, I, you start demanding and pulling things down and, and, and that's not the right posture. Remember, God is spirit and you got to know how to worship in spirit and in truth, but you got to know how to worship in spirit. <laughs> All right. So almighty God, we acknowledge and confess us that we have sinned against you in thought. Word and deed. We have not we loved you with all our hearts, heart, soul, heart, soul, mind, and strength. We have, we have not loved, loved our, our neighbor, neighbor as ourselves. Deep within, Deep within us, our sorrows for the wrong we've done, done, and the and good we have, have left undone. Lord, you are Lord, full of compassion, compassion and gracious. And gracious. Flow to anger, anger and plenteous in mercy. There's always, always forgiveness with you. With you. Restore, Restore to us the joy of your salvation. salvation. Bind up that which is broken. Is broken. Give, Give light, light to our, our minds, strength to our wheels, and rest to our, our souls. Speak to, Speak to each, each of us, and let your word abide with us. 
if Jesus was walking, walking as your, your holy will. will. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. And Lord, as, as we have opened up our hearts and we've confessed, Lord God, just take a minute now. If there's anything else on your heart is between you and Jesus, uh, you know, you don't please don't utter it out. But if there's anything else on your heart that uh, that the Holy Spirit is showing you to you need to confess, you know, things that you've said, words that you've said to your spouse, your children, maybe in anger, thoughts that you've had against or against people, whatever it is, just go ahead and release it now because we want to come in here um, without that. We don't want to walk in to this prayer with a spirit of fear or having a heaviness. So we're releasing that now to you, Lord, everything that we have done. You know the deeds, you know your people, you know your children, Lord God. So we're we're letting those things go and thanking you for forgiving us now, Lord God, as as we 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 love you, Lord, and we we thank you for your grace. We thank you. It is your grace, it is your love, and we thank you, Lord, for all of that. Amen. 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 So there's a scripture, Joshua 1, 9, it says, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Now, the first thing I, when I read this, because I read it like, you know, God's talking to me. I'm his daughter. I'm his favorite. <laughs> okay. Everybody's his favorite. But, um, but when I read this, the first, when, every time I read this, it, it reads like a father talking to a daughter, a father talking to a child. Um, a father figure, if you will, talking to a child. And it reads more like, didn't I tell you? <laughs> so when I read the scripture, it's like, didn't I tell you to be strong and courageous? Don't be frightened. Don't be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Didn't I tell you? Sorry, Lord. I know I just messed up your versions and corrupted your words, but you know what I mean. You know, so this is so, this is a scripture that, you know, I want, I want us to lay this one on our hearts for the, for the rest of this week. From Monday to Monday, didn't I tell you? Now, however you read it, is, is that's that's your business. But that's how I read it. Didn't I tell you? Have I not commanded you? So why is the Lord, why is he commanding us? Why is he telling us? Why is this so important for us to be strong and courageous? Why? Because it, it that's what it's like a gateway to us not being scared or dismayed. Because when we're when we're we're in a mode of fear, we start making decisions out of fear. We start responding to things and people out of fear. We might make decisions that we wouldn't normally make because we're doing it out of fear. Uh, and I love how the remi the reminder where it ends because you know it's not because of our might. Uh, it's not because, you know, we're so prayed up. It's not because we're in fivefold or we got, you know, any sort of any sort of education. It's got nothing to do with that. It's not because we have we're the, you know, the ushers in the church or we're on the motherboard. It's nothing to do with that. Comma, it's because the Lord is with us. The Lord, my God, is with me wherever I go. So have I not commanded? So just take a minute and just 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 eat the word, as he says. Just eat, just chew on this for a minute. And what, however it registers to you, like I said, for me, whenever I read this, it's like, didn't I tell you? <laughs> just be strong and courageous. And sometimes I hear it, didn't I tell you, daughter? Just be strong and courageous. Don't be, af don't be afraid, don't be frightened. Don't be dismayed. And it says, because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go, amen. Thank you, Lord, for just opening up our word, just reminding us. Thank you for reminding us that you're with us no matter what situation we're in, no matter what situation we are in. We thank you that we are, you're with us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for those who uh, need that fatherly voice this morning, for those who need that 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 to hear hear you in that way lord god that you'll place that that voice even in their hearts and their minds and let it play out in in the way that makes sense for them thank you for that i don't know why i just heard somebody's daddy talking to me not not a not a ghost y'all not <laughs> please don't hear what i'm not saying all right so facing uncertainty we've got three things we're going to do this morning and and i talked about um, our theme we're going to get real about some of our fears and we're going to leave it with jesus that's what we're going to do so as i mentioned before i'm trying to do more of um teaching giving my notes uh especially for those who are not who maybe they're newer to christ y'all know we've been uh opening up there's a there's a prayer in here that we've been opening up for those calling people into the body or praying over uh, those who are new to the body so we are kind of responsible right <laughs> to give them a little bit more because a lot of folks that um, watch the replays they're not in a church they don't have a body to pray with so Part of my responsibility and I'm accountable as a teacher is to make sure that I give them a little bit more and then they can go out and 
eat the word, you know, from, from the, from the churches that God sent them to wherever they, wherever they are sent to go. So, uh, so the first thing is, uh, our kickoff verse is Isaiah 41, 10, uh, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So the, the point of encouragement here, again, to just translate this. And so these translates encouragement, take away on the real talk. This is just the best ways I could explain it, y'all, if I could. Um, but the way that I'm breaking down this verse is when you think about anything, if your situation, when it gets a, a little bit overwhelming, it's re like it, really easy to let fear take over. Like I said, I feel like uh, for me, fearless faith operates um, I'm more obedient when I'm afraid and I'm not encouraging any y'all to, to do this, to, to be honest. It is, it is not, <laughs> it's not the right thing to do, but I know that when I'm in modes of, of, of fear, I grip to the father. When I have in, uncertainty, I am running, clutching to him even more. Um, but don't wait for that. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't wait for a situation or wait for, for, for life to become overwhelming for you to find the father. Don't wait until things are bad and then you run to him. We should always be clinging to him anyway. So this scripture is really just saying that God's got us, that we're not doing this alone. We thank him also for this community that we can pray. So you know you're not doing it alone. So the first verse that we're going to pray through, um, you know, is just receiving, believing, if you will, that he is with you. Thank you, God, that you're with me. I am not dismayed. Thank you that you're my God. Thank you that you're going to strengthen me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for upholding me with my righteous, with your righteous right hand. That's the prayer point. We open our mouths and we pray for that. This, this week, y'all, we're going to lean into um, praying for ourselves. You know how, again, I keep saying when we, when you go on an airplane, you got to put the mask on you first before you can put it on your friends and family or your kids. <laughs> so we're putting the mask on, if you will, on, on ourselves this morning. Cause if we carry the spirit of fear, y'all, we're just, we're going to, we're going to end up influencing and impacting everybody that comes around us. And we don't want that. We ain't doing that this season. All right. So that's the first prayer is just, Lord, thank you for being with me. And if you are afraid, if this is a moment where you are, you truly are afraid, then this is, Lord, I am afraid. You know, I'm afraid, but thank you that you're with me. Thank you that you're my God. Thank you for strengthening me and helping me and upholding me. That's your prayer. Go for it. And Lord, as they are opening their mouths now, Lord God, and approaching your throne, Lord, all of us have some level of fear and uncertainty. We don't know the future. We don't know what's coming. We don't even know what's coming in the next moment. But we stand believing that you are our father. As your word says, as you have commanded us to be strong and to be courageous, we're leaning and we're believing in you. We know, Lord God, that you're in the midst of everything. Man might think they are running things, but truly you are God. And so, Lord, we thank you for being with us and every person under the sound of my voice, whatever decision they have to make this morning, wherever they have to go this morning, if there's any doubt or any seed of fear, even uncertainty about the, the, what the future has, Lord God, Lord, we're handing that over to you and we're asking for you, Lord God, to give us a spirit of joy, give us joyful hearts, knowing, Lord God, that you are in control, knowing and truly believing that you are are our Abba, you are our God, that all, all and everything that we need comes from you. Lord, the word says that we don't have to be dismayed and we don't have to be fearful. We, you, you will strengthen us and you're going to help us. So that's what we're calling on according to your word. Your word says so. And as it, as it is written, so shall it be, Lord God. So I ask that you will heal them, Lord God, this morning, those whose mind have been succumbing to fear and worry and uncertainty about the future, about the next day, even mine, Lord, God, I ask that you remove that cloud of fear and Lord, strengthen us this morning and help them in every area of their lives. Those who are going into jobs this morning where there's uncertainty all around, as we're watching people lose their jobs this season, as we're watching men and women exhausted, parents exhausted, children exhausted, teenagers exhausted. We're watching the ex exhaustion, Lord God. As we watch people falling away from your, your word and falling away from your church, Lord God, and creating their own narratives and telling their own stories, Lord God. Lord, would you help the, help your children, Lord God. Help us this morning and strengthen us, Lord God. Oh God, we know that the spirit of fear does not come from you. So Lord, we're asking that you relieve of us of, of that this morning, Lord God, that you lift the spirit of fear and uncertainty. Lord, in every area, 
area, we ask that you will bless us and have mercy on us this morning. Have mercy, have mercy on your children, Lord God. Would you strengthen us this morning with your righteous right hand? We know that you will correct every wrong, Lord God. Father, we know that the many are the afflictions of the, of the righteous, but you have mercy. Will you show mercy towards them now this morning? Father God, let them not succumb to everything, every trap that was set. Lord God, would you bless them this morning and pull them away from the pit, Lord God? Lord, many have made decisions and said things that were corrupt and wrong and, and against your holy word. Father, would you would you pull us pull us away from the pit, Lord God? The things that we have done that cause chaos or, or cause envy or cause jealousy, Lord God. Anything that we have done, Lord God, would you forgive us now, Lord God? Father, would you strengthen us today so that we can lift up our heads just another day, so we can go just another step, one step forward, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for this day that you're giving us a, a safe way and a safe passage into your kingdom and you're blessing us this morning, that you're lifting the spirits of everyone under the sound of my voice. Thank you, Abba, for your love. I thank you, Lord God, that you're strengthening us and lifting us up this morning. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you'll give us your fullness of joy this morning. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for giving us a community to pray with, Lord God. People where we can just come and pray together. We can lift each other up, Lord God. That is divine help. And so for those who have been crying out to you to send help, Lord God, you have sent it in the form of this community, Lord God. You have sent it, Lord God, with men and women who are praying with and for each other. So I ask, Lord God, that you will bless every person who is connected to this prayer ministry in any way, Lord God. Anyone that taps or touches the grace on this house, Lord God, that it will be multiplied in their lives and their families. The grace that I carry be theirs, Lord God. So Father, I ask that you give them the grace with heaven, the grace with men, the grace with your angels, Lord God, so that there won't be there won't be one day that they go not knowing that they are connected to your throne, that there won't be one day, Lord God, that they'll have a seed of uncertainty about their placement in heaven. There won't be one day that they'll, they'll feel uncertain about the love that you have for them. There won't be one day, Lord God, yes, it is true that many are the afflictions, Lord God, but would you bless them still? Father, hide them, Lord God. Let them be hidden under your... your under your glory, Lord God, so the enemy will not locate them in any way. Father, would you do that now? By the blood of Jesus Christ, would you cover them, Lord God, and hide them from the enemy and protect them for generations to come, Lord God, as your word says, Lord God, for four generations, cover them. I thank you, Lord God, that your love your steadfast love, Lord God, as your word declares, because of your steadfast love, we are covered for thousands of years. So Father, would you do that now for them? Those who are seeking you out this morning to strengthen them, Lord God, and replace the fear and the uncertainty in our minds, trying to figure out how the next bill is going to get paid, trying to figure out where the next job is going to come from, trying to figure out how to help our children and our spouses, trying to figure out how to show up on the job trying to figure out, Lord God, how we're going to make it through this season with a smile on our face, trying to figure out figure out how to be witnesses and ambassadors of Christ, Lord God, trying to figure out how to develop a stronger relationship with you. Lord, would you meet us where we are and remove uncertainty in everything? We thank you, Lord, that that is your mercy and that is our portion. Amen. 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 Exodus 14, this is a Bible story. And so again, I try to, you know, you know, tell folks, go read the Bible, get involved, like, you know, pick up your word, you know, and, and just get, get back in the word a little bit, not just as a, a quote of the day, but just maybe, you know, pick a book or something. And even over this holiday season where we're going to have a little bit of a break, maybe from work, you know, just take even, even if it's 30 minutes and just spend some time in a day. Mm -hmm. So I love Bible stories, obviously. <laughs> so ex Exodus 14, 13 through 14, it talks about Moses. And this is what Moses said to the people. And he said, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You have only to be silent. And why I wanted to include this one is there, there's so many, there's so many things in this, these two verses that you could break down. So the first thing, 
Thank you, Lord. The first thing is when he talks about fear not, stand firm and see that sometimes we just got to look Look, you know, there's a there's a there's a verse in the Bible that talks about taste and see, but there's also look and see. See meaning sometimes we got to open our eyes up to see what he's actually doing in our lives. We miss the blessings because we're looking for, you know, that we're looking for these huge moments and yet sometimes it's in the words of wisdom when the Lord speaks to you and, and just that that voice and he tells you to send the email or make the call or text that friend. It's the small things that we keep missing. Missing. So I want us, and again, that, that helps us, right? It, it says, see the salvation of the Lord. And it says, which he will work for you today. That it's not a question, is he going to answer my prayer? He He will work for you today. And the things that the, the Egyptians, the things that the enemies in your life, right? Sometimes the enemy is, again, we're praying this month for alcohol abuse. Sometimes it's physical abuse. Sometimes it's our own emotional state. Whatever it is, you know, our trust whatever it is that are, are considered things that are fighting against us, our flesh, y'all, those very things that we see today, we ain't going to see it anymore. Why? Because we're firm and we're seeing the salvation of the Lord work through these things. It says the Lord will fight for you. You have only to be silent. And so there's a time when we, we speak, but there's a time when we have to be silent. We just have to listen. There is a discipline and a behavior that I have to adopt before I come on here. There are, there are periods of time when I have to be silent. I'm not checking your text. I'm not hearing your call. I'm not looking at anything. I just have to be silent. Why? Because in that silent, not only am I seeing the salvation, I'm seeing how he's working things through. My eyes are clearer, but I'm also hearing what he has to say for me. And that's important when we're facing uncertainty. You, you can't hear because your, your thoughts are going five miles an hour. You can't see because all you're looking at is what's in front of you. So I just want to encourage you through this story. Sometimes it says, we don't have all the answers. We know he's in control, but it doesn't mean it's easy, right? Facing things that we don't know, it doesn't mean it's easy. But there's a, there's something called faith, right? Fearless faith that I absolutely believe that God is making a way even when I can't see it, even when it's not working out the way I think it should. Before I came on this morning, I sat here, this is my office, and I was looking at my work computer and there was something that he dropped in my spirit. He told me a specific email that I needed to send to some people. Then he told me to copy some other people. And I'm just, if I had just, if I, if I had if I hadn't uh, rested my mind, if I wasn't silent, I wouldn't have been able to get those instructions. I would have missed the download. I wouldn't have seen the salvation of him working it out for me today, right? So it's those things. So I, I'm just going to pray this part over us, Lord God, that today that we want to see your salvation and how you work things out for us, Lord God. Father, we know that you are still speaking to us. So now, Lord God, we're going to choose to submit our thoughts to you, Lord God, because we want your thoughts. We want to know what's on your mind. We want to know what you're thinking about, Lord Jesus, when it comes to how we operate on the job. We want to know what you're thinking about how, when it comes to our finances, our children, and everything that you've placed in our hands. What do you want us to do with the gifts and the talents that you've given us? You've given us these opportunities. You've given us families. You've given us friends. You've given us community. What do you want? We want to come to you concerning what you want us to do. We are your vessels. We are your people. People. What do you want us to do, Lord God? That is what we're asking this morning. Father, as, as we are standing before your throne, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that you are working things out for us today. And so we don't have to have fear about what's coming tomorrow. We have joy in our hearts knowing, Lord God, that you are speaking to us. So Lord, even as we close our mouth, Lord God, we thank you for filling our thoughts, filling our minds, Lord God, with your wisdom, with your understanding. Give us your wisdom so that we know what to do and when to do it. Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that we don't have fear. So when you tell us to do something, we're going to do it. We're going to do it fearlessly, filled with faith because we believe what you say concerning us. We believe that there is an answer for every prayer. And so, Lord, we're just silencing. We're going to yield ourselves so we can hear from you. Clearly, Lord God, through all the noise, through all the chaos, we just want to hear you. Thank you, Lord God, for speaking to us, Lord God, stilling our hearts and minds so that we can hear what you say concerning every situation presented. Father, we're going to stand firm and see 
Thank you, God, for for what we're going to see you working, Lord, in the same way, Lord God, that you did it in the days of Moses. So it shall be now because you are the God of all time. You're the God yesterday, today and tomorrow. Father, they can't see. They can't see. They can't see. Father, we are repeating the same mistakes as we've done many years ago. Here are the, the modern versions of those same mistakes and we're playing them out again. Well, Lord, we're not going to miss you this time. So Lord our God, as we stand firm, holding on to your salvation, holding on to you, O Lamb of God, it's you that we want. And so we cry out to you this morning that thank you for working things out. Thank you for working things out for every family represented, Lord God. Thank you for speaking to them, Lord God. And as we seal our mouths and listen to hear from you, Lord God, will you, would you speak to them in their hearts, in their dreams, through confirmation, in word, in a Bible story, Lord God, would you confirm things to them even, even in nature as they go out and talk to different people, would you send all of your confirmation, those who have been standing in need and waiting to hear a word, would you do that for them now? You have already sent the answers, but we keep missing it, Lord God. We can't see it. Will you still our minds, Lord God, so that we can see, see you at work in our lives. And when we do, we praise you. We give you honor. We give you glory and praise. We thank you, God, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So there's an additional scripture I want to give y'all. So, there's a lot of scripture, yes. A lot of Bible reading going on. Listen, for the whole rest of this year and all of next year, we're going to be get, get tired of being in the Bible, okay? Psalm 56, 3 to 4, it says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can, what can flesh do to me? <laughs> right? So this is this is more of a, look, you know, just what I was calling a real talk. A real talk is, when I'm afraid, I'm going to put my trust in God. It's, it's in his word. It's his word that I praise. It's his word concerning every situation over my life. It's his word that I praise. It's God, it's in God that I trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? What can man do to me? The, you know, the funniest thing is when I listen to a lot of the pastors preach, especially the ones at the huge churches and all the security guards, <laughs> and they preach about heaven, but they're afraid to go to heaven. <laughs> but, you know, I'm literally like, what can, what can man do to me? If anything happens to me, I know where I'm going. Right? <laughs> right? So this is a prayer point. Look, this is just a a, 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 a a resolution, if you will. Your prayer here is just simple. Lord, I'm afraid. And if you're not afraid, it's okay. Right? Lord, I put my trust in you. Lord, I will not be afraid. I trust you. This is an I trust you prayer. So open your mouth and say, and you know, release the prayer that he puts on your heart. Whatever he's showing you for you to say over yourself, that's what you pray. Lord, I put my trust in you. I trust you, Lord. For everything that's going on, open your mouth. I put my trust in you. I trust you, Lord, for wherever you're sending us. I trusting us for the path you have us on. I trust you, Lord, for the way that my prayers are going to be answered. I trust you, God, for where we're going. Even in uncertainty, Lord, God, we trust you. We, we decide. We're resolved. We're resolute in trusting you, God. No, we don't trust men and what men decide to do. We trust you, Lord. So Lord, I ask that you will just help us to build up our faith, to be fearless, fearless in, in our faith, believing in you, to believe you more than we believe what's happening around us. So Lord God, I ask that you bless us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for building us up and lifting our hearts, Lord God. Thank you for showing us your word what your word says about us, what your word says concerning us. Thank you, Lord God, that your word says that you are our God, that you will strengthen us, that you will help us. I thank you, Lord God, that your word says that you, we will see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for us today. Thank you, Lord God, that you said that we can put our trust in you, and therefore we do. We thank you for your mercy, and we thank you for your grace, and we're letting every bit of fear, anything that we had that we that was locked up in our hearts and in our bones, Lord God, we're releasing the fear of uncertainty. We're not, we don't 
know what's coming tomorrow and that's okay because we trust you. We know that you have all things working together for you, for the good of those who love you, Lord, who you have selected, who you, who you have chosen. And so therefore, because we are those, we are those children, Lord God, those who you have marked and set apart, Lord God, that we are standing in agreement with what your word says, that all things are working together for our good. And though we can't understand the all things because we can't understand the breadth of your work, what you are doing in one, Lord God. We're just going to believe you. We're just deciding to trust you. And because of that, my heart is filled with joy because you are a loving father. I have nothing to fear because you are such, you are a loving father. I can, I can look back on my life. I can look back on experiences. I can look back on just moments ago of how you blessed us, Lord God. Look what you have already done for your people out of your mercy, out of your goodness. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Because of your sacrifice, we have access to this life everlasting. I thank you, Jesus, that you, you are the lamb and, and look what you have done for us. We praise you. We honor you. We bless you. If, if you never gave us another thing and you gave us just you, we would be pleased and honored. We love you, Lord Jesus, for what you are doing. Lord, would you use us this morning as we go our, our separate and different ways to be the light for somebody else, to be, that, to be the salt in this earth. And as light, Lord God, I ask that you turn up the flame, the fire of God in our life. Would you purify us, Lord God, so that we can go fearlessly in faith, Lord God. We can be witnesses of fearless faith, Lord God, even in uncertainties as we witness to other people, that people will look upon us and they will see something different about your children and they will know that it is the God they serve. That is why they have joy in uncertainty. That's why they still have joy in their hearts, even in the middle of uncertainty, whether they are in the community or on the job. Lord God, that's why they have joy. They have joy in every moment. When people can't understand that we are carrying the fruits of the Spirit, then when they see us having self-control and peace and love, Lord God, they will see us and want to know whose we are. Let us be those kind of believers this morning that the broken people, the homeless, the needy, the children who need help, Lord God, those who are fallen, let them look upon us, Lord God. God and want to know the God that we serve. Father, I pray that, that as you pour out your love upon us, as we carry this fearless faith, Lord God, it is because your work must be done to draw and reconcile men back to you. That is our mission. So Father God, I ask that you will touch the life and uh, can I say and purpose of every person under the sound of my voice, whether you use them to speak to one person or to speak to millions, Lord God, whatever the assignments you have on their lives this morning, Lord God, let them be the blessing in their household for generations to come. Let them be the breakthrough in their communities, Lord God. Let them be the one believer that the broken people, broken folks can see, oh God, and they'll want to know the God we serve and through the witness of our lives and the way that we carry out our lives, Lord God, that they will come to know you. They'll want to know the Jesus we serve, the Jesus that cares about the sick, the Jesus that cares about the broken, the Jesus that cares, Lord God, those are the people call for this moment. So Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are building us up this morning to be strong and courageous, knowing that you are with us no matter where we go, that you'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. In the moments of uncertainty, you have already raised your banner for us. You've already raised your banner for us. Thank you, God, that there is already victory declared for us. There is nothing that flesh can do to us. Thank you, God, that you have blessed us. You have protected us with your holy ones. You have sent them to war on our behalf. I thank you for opening heaven on our hat. On our I thank you for opening heaven and sending help, Lord God, this morning and fighting every wicked thing that was stood up against us and fighting every wicked thing that is in our, our hearts and our mind. Lord God, anything that was sent to destroy us, any incantation, Lord God, any curses, anything that was sent, anything that was set up, Lord God, 
God. This season, Lord God, as we are praying for deliverance for those who are succumbing to alcoholism or, or any kind of any spirit of defeat, Lord God. Anyone, Lord God, who's succumbing to that right now. Father God, I ask that you'll break those chains off of them in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Those who have been touching unclean things, Lord God. Those who have turned to drugs and alcohol as a way out. Lord God, those broken hearts and broken spirit, Lord God. Father God, coming from the spirit of fear. Father, you see, we don't want to go down that road. So Father, I ask that you pull them now from the pit. And if there's anyone connected to any one of us under the sound of my voice, Lord God, send us, Jesus. Send us, Lord. Give us the words to pray with and for our family members and our friends and pull them out of the pit this morning. Let this be a season of deliverance, Lord God. Lord, we don't want to just have fearless faith to get what we want from you. We want to have fearless faith so we can be closer to you, so we can be more like you, Jesus, so that when people see us, they see your fire. Lord God, teach us how to be silent now, Lord God, so we can hear, so we can hear more and speak less, so that when we open our mouth, it is fire. When we open our mouth, it is fire and deliverance. Thank you, God, for blessing our tongue. So every time we open our mouth, it is fire and deliverance from you, from heaven. Lord, I only want to say what heaven has to say. I only want to go where heaven tells me to go. Father, would you do that for them now? Father, thank you for the grace that is on this house. Father, thank you for the grace of heaven. Father, give us the grace we'll need with men. Father, send them divine help in every area of their lives. Father, those who stand in need of healing, oh, those who stand in need of financial help, Lord God, I believe that you will come through for them. Give us the discipline, Lord God, when you have blessed us, Lord God, so we don't waste our time, talent, or finances, Lord God. For those who have set up schemes, Lord God, to steal and take from others, Lord God, I ask that you dismantle that in the name of Jesus Christ. If there's any plans that were put in place by anyone under the sound of my voice, Lord God, where they have sought out to create things to steal or take from people, Lord God, that you'll shut that thing now, that you'll dismantle it. We want what you have for us. We want the right way, Lord God. We want the kind of blessings that the devil won't have his hand in. We don't want to sign any agreement that has been tied back to the evil one in any way. So Lord God, we don't want to do anything out of fear. And because we don't know what's coming, we're making decisions out of fear. We don't want that. Father, would you give them wisdom to know when it is you answering their prayers, Lord God. We don't want to fall in any trap or any trick of the enemy, Lord God. Any distortion of your word, Lord God, I ask that you'll turn us away from that right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we know, Lord God, that you're our, you're our Father. You love us. It is because of your steadfast love. It is because of your grace and your mercy. It is only because of you. So, Father, we yield now to you to be the lead in our life, to be the Lord. Jesus, we want you to be Lord and Savior in our life, to Lord over all, including our decisions, Holy Spirit. So, would you just be on our hearts heavy, heavy this week, Lord God, in every decision, oh God, so we, we don't lose faith and we don't lose hope. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for everything. Amen. Now go ahead and ask if there's anything we've missed. Ask him out of your mouth. You can speak. You can Whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive. If he's putting someone's name on your heart, pray for that person. If he's putting you on your heart, pray for yourself. Lift them up right now. And Lord, as they are opening their mouth and they're... Lord God, I ask that you will hear their prayers now and you'll receive it, Lord God, onto yourself. Thank you, God, for, for, for peace. Thank you for peace in our hearts. Thank you for peace in our minds. Thank you for blessing us. Father, those of us who are just uncertain about what's coming and we don't know what's happening next and we don't know the next decision and we're waiting for answers, we're waiting for the phone calls, we're waiting for the emails, we're waiting for deliverance, we're waiting for good news. Father God, I ask that you'll bless them this week with good news. I ask that this week is a week of good news. Let it be a testimony unto the greatness of God. Let it be a testimony of how good you are, Abba, for your children. Who else would we go to? Who else would we speak? to, but you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Let this be a week of blessings. Let this be a week, Lord God, 
Father, I don't want to speak words of encouragement. I want to speak words of truth. Let me not be put to shame before your throne and bless them. Bless them so this is a week of miracles. Bless them so this is a week of turnaround. Bless them, Lord God. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Bless them, Lord God. Bless them beyond understanding. Open up their eyes to see your salvation, to see your work today in the emails, in the phone calls, Lord God. Thank you, God, for what you are doing for us this morning. Thank you for showing us your way and your will, Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, we're going to do our declaration, then we're going to do a prayer, and then we're going to close stuff out. So I declare this day that no weapon formed against me can prosper. I am the righteousness of God. Favor surrounds me as a shield. I am therefore in the right I am therefore in the right place. I cannot be defeated or destroyed. In fact, every time that it accuses me, every time that it accuses me, I condemn with my words. This is an encouragement. My words. A child of God made in his this image. Is my this is my heritage. This is my right as a child of God. Made in his Coming image. Coming forth out of my spirit through my words. I declare today me. that Satan has Coming no power over my life. Every word. weapon he has. I declare today that Satan that has no power over my life. That fear is cast out. That love makes my faith. Every weapon he has. Therefore, I cannot fail. That fear is cast out. That love makes my faith work. His word cannot fail. And therefore, I cannot fail. His word cannot fail. And therefore, I cannot fail. His word 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 cannot fail.
All right, so just take a minute. We're just gonna thank him. You know, I'm gonna thank him for what he's doing for me this week. I'm gonna thank him. It's Monday. I'm gonna thank him for what he's doing for me on Friday. So just open your mouth and just be thankful. Lord, we give thanks to you this morning. We thank you for all that you have done. I thank you for just being here, Holy Spirit. I thank you. I thank you that I don't have to usher you in. You've never left me. Thank you, Lord. I've never had to usher you in because you have never left me. You are a part of me. Amen. You are a part of my DNA. So I thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for reminding me when the word says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never let you go. That when it says the God. God is with us, right? I thank you, God, that I don't have to perform a ceremony to, to usher you in because you are already here. I just have to put myself in position so I can hear clearly. I, I, so Lord, I ask that that's what you do for us this week. Put us, we want to be in position so we can hear clearly from you, Lord God. We just want to open up our hearts so we hear more of you and less of ourselves. Open up our thoughts, Lord God. Any thought that, Lord God, that didn't come from you, we don't want that. We, we want to, we just want to, a mind mind shift, Lord God, where we're hearing more from you and less from uh, from ourselves, Lord God. That's what we want, Lord God. This is a house that you will never leave, Holy Spirit. This prayer ministry is yours. So I thank you, Lord, that I don't have to do anything to usher you. I just want to recognize and acknowledge you that, Lord, you are the Lord and Savior of this prayer ministry. You are the Lord and Savior of our lives. And that's what we give you thanks for, for never leaving us and never forsaking us and never letting us go. And thank you that you will make your presence known among your people, Lord God, tonight, this morning, tomorrow, next week, next month, this year, 10 years from now. Make your presence known to us, Lord God, so that we can become more familiar when you are with us, right? So we can we can, we can can clutch onto you more. That's what we want. Make your presence known among us, Lord God. Everywhere, every place that we go, let, let make your presence be known, Lord God. Let your fire burn so bright that demons flee. They don't, they don't even want to come in, into contact with us. Let our fires burn so bright, Lord God, that every evil thing flees, Lord God, because we carry you, because we carry the, the Holy Spirit, because we are on flame for you, we are on fire for you, because we carry the fire of God, because we carry that. Let, let, let every single evil thing flee from us right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, benediction, Ephesians 3, 20 to 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. All right, I'm going to stop my sharing. And then one quick um, announcement for tomorrow night, I'm going to be um, a little bit late. Makisha is going to lead, take lead tomorrow. So Makisha, I'm going to have to, I'll talk to you later about coming in early so I can set you up on the Zoom. But I will still be here. I'm just um, celebrating my daughter at a concert tomorrow night. Uh, we have to do that, right? Got to put family in there. And uh, But please, y'all, for those of y'all who watch Mondays, come back and join us on Tuesday night at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. And then after that, I'm back on um, Thursday teaching. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing. Wish everybody who's watching uh, a wonderful, awesome, amazing Monday, and I will see y'all soon.